And good evening, everybody, and welcome to Hope Community Church. The Thoroughbreds back in the house tonight, looking to stay undefeated at Hope as they host the Bruins of Piedmont International University of Winston-Salem. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Davis. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's another great uh, game in store. Coming off of two tough losses to third-ranked Florida National over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we'll talk with Mario Farah about that and get an overview of what he looks for out of the Bruins tonight and head coach Josh Howard. Uh, he of NBA fame, he's the head coach of the Bruins. We'll talk to Mario Farr right after this. You can hurt yourself anywhere, on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports app, your home for your sports network. As we get set to start tonight, uh, our first home game of the 2020 campaign. Uh, and uh, tonight we are looking forward to Carolina Christian College coming in. Uh, but... A couple of big games over the weekend, Coach. You uh, you took the uh, the Conquistadors almost to the wire twice, ranked third in the USCAA, and uh, came away short on each one. I, I know that was disappointing, but what what did you come away from those two games with? What did you learn from that? Um, I think the guys, uh, it was a very eye-opening, um, teachable moment uh, for them, of course, and definitely for me, too. Um, you know, just the way that they play, the up-tempo style. Um, I, I told them that, you know, that's what I envision for our team. Um, just the way they push the ball quick, make a miss. They, they get it up so quick. Um, and it made me, you know, make adjustments, in, even in both games. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, talent-wise and everything, they have some high-powered. Uh, they got 6'10", 7-footers. Um, so, you know, we had to make adjustments for that, too. Um, just a great experience overall. Um, even outside of you know basketball, you know it was a good experience for the for the kids. Good opportunity um, down in Miami. We had a great time. Uh, able to go to the beach and everything. It was it was really good, really fun. It was really fun, except for when the bus broke down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was definitely an experience. <laughs> and I think, it, like I said, it, I think it took a toll uh, on us a little bit because you know we stayed up uh, pretty late Friday and had had to get up early Saturday morning for our game. So. Um, but again, um, uh, overall, it was great competition. Uh, you know, Coach Thatcher, Coach Thatcher has a great program and everything down there. Uh, we're building a great relationship. Um, definitely want us to come back every year, so uh, we're excited about that. All right. Well, uh, talking about building a program uh, over in Winston-Salem, Piedmont International University doing that. And uh, uh, they uh, they went after, I guess you could say, and uh, started at the top uh, looking for a coach and ended up getting the uh, MVP of the NBA, Josh Howard, who's leading the uh, the program over there. We played them uh, a few weeks ago, came up again just slightly short. They come into our place tonight. What do you look for uh, out of – I still want to call them the conquerors. Back in 
in the day. They were called the Conquerors. Now they're the Bruins. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you look for out of the Bruins tonight, and what do we have for them? Um, well, we did, as always, uh, prepare for them, watch them some film. Uh, we played them the first time, so we know exactly who to uh, um, focus on and everything for the day. Number four is their main player, their main star. Um, the other wing, number one, he had a pretty good game against us, so I'm um, going to have you know our best defenders and everything on them, kind of uh, give them a little pressure and stuff. Uh, I think they you know break a little bit under the pressure. Um, so uh, we, we prepared for them. Um, even after the trip, you know, wanted to have practice yesterday, but I know we were just too tired. So uh, we had some walkthroughs and, and practice and stuff uh, today talking about it. So uh, we're prepared for them, and we're excited to compete against them. All right, Coach, uh, congratulations on uh, uh, what's been a successful season really overall. We're getting ready to head up to uh, – you've got two more big road trips coming up, so we'll uh, maybe talk about that after the game tonight. Uh, but uh, good luck tonight, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you after the game. All right, thank you very much. All right, head coach of the Thoroughbreds, Mario Farr. Uh, stay tuned when we come back. It'll be the Duke Sports Medicine pregame injury report and our starting lineups and the tip-off after this. And now we're set for our starting lineups here. Uh, first of all, our Duke Sports Medicine Injury Report. Everybody is dressed. Everybody is healthy for the thoroughbreds. And uh, thanks in part to uh, the fine folks at Duke Sports Medicine for uh, all the training uh, that they uh, provide for the thoroughbreds. They are the official sports medicine provider, Duke Ortho and Sports Medicine. Now for our starting lineups for Piedmont International University. They come in with a three and nine record. Starting at one guard, a 6'1 senior from Winston-Salem. Number one, Tamir Glenn, averaging 17.3 points per game. Number two, Kendall Oliver is a 6'5 senior forward out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Another guy to watch out for, 5'11", sophomore guard, Curtis Coleman. He wears number four. He's from Winston-Salem, another local product on this Bruin squad. He's averaging 20 points a clip. Jeffrey Nolan, Jr., a 6'6", swing man, sophomore from Leeds, Alabama. He's number 35 and number 40. ben -Ami Spence, a 6'1", swing man, junior, out of Miami, Florida. The head coach of the Bruins, Josh Howard. He is assisted, assisted by Torres Young Canty and Steve Nibbins. Now for your thoroughbreds. Averaging 16.5 points a game, a freshman guard out of Clayton, 6'2", number three, Kenny Anderson, Jr. J.B. Azell Upchurch, he's the point guard, a 5'11 freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. He wears number 14. The big guy in the middle, 6'5 freshman forward out of the capital city, number 21, Devon Ellicott. Number 23 is from Durham. He's a 6'5 freshman forward, number 23, Chris Dickey. And starting at the other forward position, a 6'5 sophomore from Cairo, Egypt, number 35, Victor Nong. Blue Lights coached by Mario Farr in his second season, assisted by Jeanette Pulley, Joel Myers, James Odie, and Gerard Hicks. The Thoroughbreds, 9 and 11, and they're jumping it off. And the Thoroughbreds control the jump, and they are in their home whites with the blue trim, the uh, orange trim as well, blue numerals. And uh, they will control this opening possession. The Bruins in their road blue with the light blue uh, trim. And lost out of bounds, says Lonnie Odom, one of our officials, along with Galen Durant and Michael Shepard. Thanks for joining us here this evening from Apex, North Carolina. We're 17 seconds into the contest, and the Bruins with their first offensive possession of the ball game, working it down underneath and doing the damage early. Sure enough, picking up where he left off. Curtis Coleman, Jr. draws first blood for the Bruins, and it's 2 to nothing. Inside to Alicott. Alicott hands off to JB. 19.15 to go. It's swatted at it. Can't get it to go. And taken away from Alicott underneath. That's Coleman. Coleman gets it out front to Tamir Glenn. He can do some damage as well. Stops, pop, shoots from the free throw line. Not there. They'll tap it back outside. Good work by Spence. And they'll keep it alive with a fresh shot clock. And uh, they're going to reset the shot clock to 20 seconds. 
and they'll take it out of bounds. Sixty-two seconds gone in this one. It's a two to nothing Piedmont International lead over the Thoroughbreds. Had the opportunity to chat before the game with the coaching staff, including Josh Howard and just one of the finest gentlemen you want to meet. Off the back iron, cleared by Dickey. Here come the Thoroughbreds. Puts it up against some stiff competition, and it's drawn in by Nolan. He has the rebound, and here come the Bruins. Working on the baseline inside. It goes off the glass, up and good. Spence with another bucket, and it's four to nothing. Nong going inside, finds Alicott. Alicott's fouled on the play. It's going to be a reach in on Nolan, his first. And the team's first, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. Devon Alicott averaging seven points, six rebounds a ball game. And a uh, pretty good free throw shooter as witnessed right there, and he's got the first point of the night for the horses. It's 4-1 to one now, 18-21 here in the first half of action. Rattles them both in. Doesn't matter how much iron you draw as long as it drops through the net. 4-2. to two. Giving it off to Coleman. Coleman driving to the corner. He is triple teamed. They get it outside. Good ball movement. Back in the hands of Coleman. He's guarded by JB. Work it outside. Almost threw it into the backcourt. Tamir Glenn at the controls now working against Dickey. Left hand side. This is Oliver driving and takes an NBA drive. Looked like an extra step in there. Cleared out by the thoroughbreds. JB stops, pops, shoots. Back iron, not there. Piedmont with the rebound once again. This is Oliver. Oliver with the handoff to Coleman. Big guy goes inside, can't get it to drop, and Alicott can't hang on to it. Piedmont has it back with a fresh 20. In and out, not there. JB clears the glass. Here come the Thoroughbreds, and a ball kicked out of bounds. It'll still be Thoroughbreds basketball. Just over two and a half minutes into the ball game, and we get our first substitution of the night. It's Hashim Weston checks into the ball game for Piedmont. There he gets the clear. And he'll be checking in for Oliver. Galen Durant bringing the ball over to the near side where Kenny Anderson does the honors and we're back underway. Thanks for joining us here in Apex this evening. If you can't be here, thanks for joining us. Long range bomber, Anderson not there. Rebound comes down to the Bruins. And once again, Coleman does the work. Outside to Spence, left side, Weston going inside and a whistle by Galen Durant. And uh, looks like Nolan. Nolan was uh, holding his hand like maybe he jammed a finger. And I think the foul is uh, going to go against JB, his first, team's first. Ball control foul. One foul apiece now. Four to two, still the Piedmont lead. A lot of quickness and athleticism. Three-pointer on the way, not there. Tapped up once, not there. Cleared by Dickey. We're off to the races again. He has to pick it up. Over in the corner, that's Nong shot. It's long. Once again, Piedmont clearing quickly forward, up and off the glass. Good to Spence. He's got four of the six points here in the early going. Three and a half minutes gone, six to two the lead. Piedmont over BLC. Knocked into the backcourt, stolen by Piedmont. And makes him pay, but he gets it in. JB there on the defense. Hashim Weston with the bucket and a timeout on the floor. It's a 60. We'll take it as well as Mario Farr doesn't like what he's seeing here in the early going. 8-2, to two, Piedmont International leading Blue Lights College back right after this. You can hurt yourself anywhere. 
on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports app, your home for your sports network. These two teams met back in January, January the 11th in Winston-Salem. It was an 89 to 80 victory for the Bruins. Blue Lights looking to even up this series in the second only meeting between these two schools. Pass goes inside to Alicott, working hard, tapped up, not there, working for the rebound. And even though the Bruins, Weston lost his footing, no foul on the call outside, not there, out of bounds, and it's going to belong to the Thoroughbreds. Heard just getting their feet back under them after a grueling road trip to Florida, to the Miami area for two games against nationally ranked Florida National. Nong loses the handle and it's picked up quickly by Olafemi Boko, who's checked into the ball game. Smallest man on the floor. He's a guard out of Winston-Salem, a junior, 5'8". Looks to be about 130 pounds soaking wet. Into the hands of JB, he works it across. Nice feed to Dickey. Dickey working inside and big defense there and Alicott working in for two. And he's got all four of the Thoroughbreds points here in the early going. Eight to four in the corner. Shot not there for Jacob Cook, who's also checked into the ball game. Glenn with the basketball gives it up to Joshua Daniels, who's also come off the bench for Josh Howard. He has the shot there. There it's not there and over the back is, or are they just calling it out of bounds? Another substitution, Cameron Alexander checks into the ball game for PIU. And Tamir Glenn will sit down, a deep bench. And if you had a chance to look over at that bench, you can see there's about, I think, a solid 15, maybe 16 players that the Bruins have brought from Winston-Salem here this evening. A lot of quickness on it as well. Boku right now kicks it into the corner, back outside from the elbow. There's the shot. It's up. It's good by Daniels, his first bucket of the night. It's the first three of the ball game as well, and it's 11 to four. Just over five minutes played in this ball game to Anderson, who needs to get hot. Dickey down inside. He works. Bounce pass. Turn around. Nong, his shot short. The follow is up and good by Ellicott, and a foul on the play. Foul is on Weston, his first. The second, and Alicott back to the line again, and he has done all the damage here in the early going. All six points and subs checking in. Chance Jamison onto the floor. Darian Williams checks in. Jawan Browder is also coming off of the Pines as Alicott and Nong stay on the floor for the Thoroughbreds. Alicott shot good. He's got all seven of the points and trims the lead to four. 14-20 to play, first half. Loses the handle, but Piedmont remains in possession. 20 to shoot. This is Boko. Working it around the horn to Alexander. Between the rings, working against CJ. Outside, 
That's Cook. Cook goes inside. His shot not there. Jamison with the rebound for the herd. Gets it over to Dickey. And there's a reach in. It's going to be a blocking call. Looks like Caleb Terrell is going to be called on it, if I got that correct. Maybe Cook, Jacob Cook, I'm going to say. I guess that was a three, not a four. Number 13, he goes to the bench. Corner, Jamison. Not a lot of free space because they are quick on defense. And a nice shot off the glass for Dickey and somebody not named Alicott scores for the Thoroughbreds. Cuts the lead to two. The lightning fast Boku inside and a whistle. Daniels to inbound, baseline left for the Bruins. They lead 11 to nine, working underneath. It's not there, they'll work it back outside. Boku finds Daniels in the corner. This is Alexander, not there, tipped outside. They keep possession of the ball game and rattling it in for three is Boku. 14 to nine now, coming up on the 13 minute mark. Browder has to pick up his Dribble and thrown into the backcourt. Williams just not establishing possession in the front court, and that's a turnover. Fourteen to nine as we hit thirteen minutes to play, seven minutes gone in this one. Thoroughbreds looking to get back on the winning track after dropping two in Florida over the weekend. Almost lost the handle on that, saves it, and there's a charge inside. Darian Williams holding his position. It's going to be Alexander picking up the first, the fourth team foul against the Bruins. Turns the ball over to BLC. Williams to Jamison to Browder. And they break the press with plenty of time to spare. Williams at the controls, gets the pick from Dickey, working against the man-to-man, -man, and there's going to be the reach in. And I've got that as the second foul against Cameron Alexander, the sophomore out of Mississippi, into Alicott. Looking for help, bounce pass to Dickey. 12.25 to play in this one. Piedmont's led all the way. Dickey on the drive, swatted outside. Browder's there to collect it. Did not touch anything, and the shot clock is counting down. Shot up, hits the rim. That should reset the so shot clock. Off the glass, it's up and good for Alicott, who is doing yeoman's work under there. He's got nine of the 11 points thus far. 14 to 11. Mario Farr calling out defensive instructions to the Thoroughbreds with 11.44 to play. From the ring, shot is up and good. That is Daniels. He's got 5 points, 16 to 11, making the difference in the ball game. Into Alicott. Oh, he can't handle it. Just off of his fingertips. A Bruin got a fingertip on it and just enough to put it out of reach of Alicott. 11-20 to play, 16 to 11. Piedmont with the lead and the basketball. Left-hand side, this is Boko working against Dickey. A size disadvantage, but Boko is like lightning. Outside. Driving inside and a foul. Two shots coming up. And Browder's going to pick up his first. Team's third.
Joshua Daniels, a six-foot sophomore out of Brooklyn, New York, draws his first from the free throw line. That is his sixth point of the night. Josh Howard going to his deep bench once again and brings in Jeffrey Nolan, who started the ball game. Comes back into the action and Spence also back onto the floor for the Bruins as Daniels hits them both, 18 to 11. To Jamison. Williams to Browder. Browder squares up his shot just short, rebound. It's the big guy, Nolan, hauling it in. Nolan, a 6'6 sophomore, uses, uses his big body underneath, working against Baker. Can't get it, gets his own rebound. Alicott strips it. Quickly down the floor and picked off underneath the bucket. Here come the Bruins once again. Boko. Daniels looking for help. He's going to take it on his own. Shot not there short. CJ hauls it in for the herd. Working around and throws it away. Daniels was cutting back, or rather Williams was cutting back. Starters Glenn and Coleman check back into the lineup for Piedmont. First ever home meeting for Blue Lights against Piedmont International, though this school in Winston-Salem been around for many years. It's Glenn, Glenn handing it off underneath and all kinds of trouble underneath there and tied up possession arrow will keep the ball in the possession of Piedmont and the uh, shot clock's gonna have to be reset as it continued to count down. And uh, looks like it's going to have to be maybe about 10 seconds, I'd say, maybe back on the shot clock. Referees talking about it right now. They'll get that straightened out. This school originally known as Piedmont Bible College and several years ago changed their name to Piedmont Baptist College and eventually mutated into Piedmont International University through many mergers with uh, other Christian colleges. Making it look easy from outside is Nolan. He gets his first bucket. 20 to 11, and there's the steal. Coleman there to strip the ball away, and it's kicked by CJ unintentionally. 28 on the shot clock, 9.31 to play in this first half of action. Bruins will retain possession. Here we go. This is Glenn. Short. Baker is there. Forward and throws it into the Piedmont bench just out of the reach of Chance Jamison. So it's Weston, Glenn, Spence, Nolan, And Coleman on the floor right now. It's the starting five for Josh Howard and a whistle. And an illegal pick set by Piedmont will turn the ball over to BLC. Trailing by nine, 9.14 to play. Jamison, and that is not gonna work. Very athletic squad from Winston-Salem, and uh, they are going to contest every single pass. Williams almost getting himself in trouble, got rid of the ball in time to Browder. Browder working against Spence. Now gets free. They shouldn't do that, and that's why. Jawan can hurt him from there, 20 to 14. Out front to Coleman, 17 to shoot. Gets by Baker, back outside, three shot on the way, in and out, not there, CJ holds it in. Eight and a half, 
play first half. Browder gets free. He's got the range. He's got five points in a row. And has cut the lead to four, just like that. This is Weston. 17 to shoot, working against Baker and Williams, working it around the horn. Finds Glenn. Glenn working against CJ. Gets free into the corner and a whistle. Three seconds. Camping out in the middle. Eight minutes to play. Blue lights will be in the bonus for these remaining eight minutes of the first half. Trailing by four. Give and go to Yak. Off the glass, up and good. It's a two-point game. Think they've been practicing that? 20 to 18. It's a one possession ball game. There's the drive. Too hard off the glass. CJ out front to Williams. Williams taking it one on one and up and in and we're tied. Pressure in the backcourt broken by Glenn down underneath. Off the glass, it's not there. CJ bringing it in again. Off to Baker. The fast break is on. Picked off. This is Weston. He's got his man beat. Takes it to the hole. 22 to 20. Anybody's ball game now. Williams wanting the home run. Off to Yak. Yak with the drive. Puts up the left-hander. It's not there. And here come the Bruins. Back on top by two, working around, gets by his defenders in the corner. That shot not there, tapped outside, and Galen Durant says it was last touched by the Thoroughbreds. Wholesale substitutions for Blue Lights and for the Bruins. JB, Kenny Anderson, Devon Alicott, Chris Dickey all checking back in. Browder stays out for the white clad, clad Thoroughbreds. Coleman steps out of bounds, turns it over. Good defense by J.B. Azell Upchurch. Joshua Daniels out on the floor as well. Tamir Glenn. Kendall Oliver. And Jeffrey Nolan. Those are the five. And pick the pocket of J.B. Here come the Bruins. A two on four. He decides wisely to hold it up and they'll work it around. Oliver. Driving on JB into traffic, brings it in and it counts. A foul on the play and Mario Farr can't believe it. Twenty-four twenty, six twenty-one to play. First half, twenty-five to twenty, back to a five-point lead. After the free throw by Kendall Oliver, getting three the old-fashioned way, feeding inside, outside Anderson. It's long. Big rebound by Nolan. Glenn. Finds his man inside, using the glass, up and good for Jeffrey Nolan. 27-20, it's been tied once. As L. Upchurch finding his man, Alicott, inside. He's having to work for it now. He couldn't handle that laser pass from JB underneath. He was only open for a split second. This is Glenn. Glenn's going to set it up. Working against Anderson, 5.28 to play. Alicott looking inside, somebody's open, it's outside, it's the big guy, Nolan for three. And the big guy showing some range and it's a 10 point advantage, that's the largest lead of the ball game for the Bruins, 5.08 to play. 20 on the shot clock. Terrell on defense against JB to Anderson, who's working against Glenn. They'll get it to Browder. He sees an opening off the glass, not there, but he's fouled on the play. Two shots, and Boko gets set to uh, check back in. 
Subs getting set for blue lights as well. Browder hits the first. He's had a big impact since he checked into the ball game. He's got six points now. Dickey and JB sit down. Anderson sits down. Ty Howard makes his first appearance of the night. Williams is back into the lineup. Not there. And here comes Piedmont. Leading by nine once again. Boko. The foul is away from the basketball. Kendall Oliver picking up the infraction. Thirty to twenty one, the advantage for Piedmont to Browder. Off to Williams. They'll set it up. Working against the lightning fast Boko. 14 to shoot and Williams is going to get two shots coming up. I think that's going to be Boko on the foul. No, it looks like it's going to be Tamir Glenn. I think that's his first. We're already in the bonus. And two shots coming up for the sophomore. 6-1 sophomore from Raleigh hits the first. He's got three points tonight. And make it four. 30-23, to 4-16 to play, first half. Again, the full court pressure just slowing down Piedmont, but not much. There's the shot by Glenn, up and good for three. Don't want Glenn to get going, averaging 17 points a clip. There's Browder having to work for it. Takes it all the way to the hole. Trims the lead to eight. In the corner, back outside, man-to-man -man defense by Blue Lights. Glenn calling it and takes it. Three. He's got six. 36-25, lead at 11. And that's the new largest margin of the game. Alicott sees the opening and takes it. And a timeout on the floor, 3-18 to play, and I believe it's a full. We'll take it as well. 36-27, back right after this. You can hurt yourself anywhere, on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports App, your home for your sports network. An 11-point deficit for Blue Lights. They have not led in the ball game. They have tied once. And we're back to action, Piedmont. After that one tie, they spread it out again. They're at their largest lead of the night. Well, it was the largest just a few moments ago before that Alicott bucket. Getting the shooter's roll for three. 
And I believe that was Glenn again. He has nine points all here in the last 60 or 90 seconds. Ty Howard has checked back into the ball game for Blue Lights and Chris Baker as well. Ty Howard with the shot and not there. And a whistle away from the ball and let's see what that call is gonna be. Galen Durant. And it looks like it's gonna be Boko picking up the personal. And two shots is what Durant says. And I believe it's gonna be Williams at the line as we're in the double bonus. Williams averaging over nine points a ball game. And a good free throw shooter. He's hit three there this evening, three of three. 39-28 with 2.37 to play first half, and I jinxed him. Boko gets it off to Glenn, cross court to, no, no, that's um, Oliver, excuse me. Oliver sees a hole and rattles it in off the glass. 41-28, back to a 13-point deficit for Blue Lights as we approach the two-minute mark. Browder to Baker for two, not there. And they're going to say Howard touched it last. Alicott checks into the ball game for Baker. Baker's been putting in some valuable minutes subbing for Alicott here, here in the second semester and has uh, added a lot of depth to that back line. 41-28, two minutes to go now before the intermission. Jacob Cook has checked back into the lineup. Foul is on Howard, his first. And I only have that as the fourth foul against Blue Lights. Played a pretty disciplined game here in the first half. 41-28. Working against Howard outside, Glenn has it. Between the rings. And Alicott with the swat away, but the charge on Glenn picks up at least his second personal. 139 to play, and it'll be Blue Lights basketball as they want to get it back to at least single digits before heading to the locker room. Browder brings it across. Williams working on Boko, gets it inside, high off the glass, can't get it to drop. Two more shots coming up for Williams. The fouls are really piling up now for the Bruins, but they've got such a deep bench. They can just about afford to give them up as Williams now four of five from the line. Williams providing some pressure in the backcourt. The Bruins beat it with 113 remaining here first half, 41-30. This is Glenn who maintains the position, and no, that's a turnover. Does not, oh, a timeout to keep possession. A 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here with 64 seconds remaining, 41 to 30. After this game tonight, Another big road trip coming up 
this weekend for the Thoroughbreds. This Friday, they will be in Buffalo, New York to take on Villa Maria College. And then on Saturday, they take on fifth-ranked Bryant and Stratton of Buffalo, ranked fifth in the USCAA. They've already faced third-ranked competition. They'll face number five on Saturday. And, and what was the call there? Are they counting that? No. There was a violation, and they waved off the shot. And with 50.8 seconds to play, another timeout on the floor. We'll keep it right here. What well, would have been a three-pointer, negated. Still an 11-point bulge for the Bruins, who have not trailed in this ball game. Coach Josh Howard talking things over with his squad right now. And if that name rings a bell, yeah, that is the Josh Howard, who was the MVP of the National Basketball Association just a few years ago, came back to his hometown of Winston-Salem. And the college president, Charles Pettit, said to Josh Howard, I'm looking for a coach. Can you help me find one? Howard called him back the next day. He says, I found you one. I'll take the job. Thrown away inside, and there's a whistle. Looks like it could be a tripping call. As Piedmont had a takeaway inside. That's going to be Howard's second foul. 33.9 seconds on the game clock, 30 seconds on the shot clock. Here we go. Piedmont. I, I doubt they'll be content to hold it for one shot. I didn't think so. That's not their style. And why, when you can work it in like that to Jacob Cook for his first bucket, 43 to 30, 14 seconds. Says Howard, stops, pops, shoots. It's not there. Rebound Piedmont. Quickly forward. And that's incidental contact by uh, on Browder. No, nothing he could do about that. Picks up his second foul. He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that's going to allow Glenn to, not Glenn, but Boko to go to the line. Hits the first. 5.8 seconds to go in this first half. And hits them both. Five points, five seconds. Here comes Williams. Williams wanting to take it to the hole off the glass. It's not there, tapped away. And that is the first half of action. And we have a 15-point advantage for Piedmont International at the break, 45 to 30 over the thoroughbreds of Blue Lights College. We're going to step away. And uh, we'll be back in less than 15 minutes. Take a look at the first half scoring stats and second half of action here from Hope Community Church in Apex. Stay tuned, everybody.
John Alicott. He leads all scorers, by the way, and scored the first seven points of the ball game for Blue Lights. Chris Dickey has two, Yak Yak with two. For Piedmont, a lot of guys in the scoring column. Joshua Daniels with seven. Curtis Coleman with eight points, including two from beyond the arc. Five each for Olafemi Boko and Kendall Oliver. Three points for Tamir Glenn. Two points for Hashim Weston. Alex, or Cameron Alexander, Jacob Cook with two each as well. Four points for Spence. Seven points for Jeffrey Nolan, who is the only player in foul trouble with three. We are back to action and an uphill battle for Blue Lights. Down by 15 as we're back to action. Outside, Jamison, three, and you can get back into the game pretty quickly like that. His first bucket of the night. We could afford to get him into the offensive flow, 45-32. Bringing the offensive set way outside and the thoroughbreds coming with him. Coleman for two, 47-32 to Dickey. Jamison waits his turn. And he's got the first five points of the second half for the thoroughbreds, 47-34. We're a minute into the ball game, second half action. Josh Howard looking from the end of the Piedmont bench. Looks like the starter's back on the floor for Piedmont. In and out, not there. And too far for Dickey. Going for the home run. Dickey with the defensive opposition in the backcourt outside. Glenn drains it for three, making it look easy. He's got six points, 50 to 34, 16 our biggest lead. Steele, not there, tapped up, not there. Swatted away, but Piedmont retains possession. 21 on the shot clock, and Coleman will set it up. Right side, working around the defense, finds a baseline there up off the glass. Two shots will be coming up. Oliver, a 6'5 senior out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. His first one is short. He had five in the first half. Kenny Anderson checks into the ball game for Blue Lights. Anderson struggled offensively in the first half, did not find pay dirt. Oliver gets that one. 51-34. Dickey throws it away. Here comes the Bruins. Down underneath, it's up and good. Spence for two and a timeout. Mario Farr as his team falls behind by 19-17-41. It's a full. We'll take it as well. We'll be right back. You can hurt yourself anywhere, on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. 
Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports App, your home for your sports network. Thoroughbreds are in a world of hurt. Down by 19. Trailed by 15 at the break. And Piedmont has come back out blazing here in the second half. Double team. Anderson's in trouble. Gets it out to Jamison. 15 on the shot clock. To Williams in front of the Thoroughbreds bench. Looking for a hole. Dishes it to Alicott. Alicott with the baby hook, drops it through. And he's got 13 on the night, 53-36. Thoroughbreds need a stop right here as subs get set to check back in for Piedmont. Outside, long range three, not there. Rebound, though, to Piedmont. They'll try it again. There it is for two. Spence has eight points. And the lead is back to 19, just like that. Outside to Williams. Dickey to Alicott on the baseline, not there. And Glenn... He's going to hold it up as the defense sets. Williams comes out to contest. And the lightning fast Bruins will set it up with 13 to shoot. Taking their time on this one. Overshoots it, but get the rebound. Outside, not there. And, and apparently a Foul on the rebound against Piedmont. Boko, Weston, and Daniels back on the floor for Piedmont International. It's Dickey, Alicott, Williams, Jamison, and Anderson on the floor, and Williams throws it away. Retrieved by PIU. Here comes the Bruins once again. They kick it outside. That's two, not there. And Williams says, enough of that. I'll get it back myself. Driving inside and blocking call on the shot. And Williams will go to the line again. And he has made good work there tonight. I have him as five of six from the line for eight points in the first half. And the scores table buzzes for the officials. And, and I believe it is uh, Nolan has fouled out of the ball game. So here early in the second half, Jeffrey Nolan picks up his fifth foul. And Spence back onto the floor for Josh Howard. Williams has been solid from the line tonight and gets into double digits with that one, 55-38. Now for some stops. To the hole, not there, and a blocking foul underneath. And I think that's going to be Williams called for the infraction. And it's Darian's second. Josh Daniels, seven points in the first half, including two free throws. Shot 
Brooklyn, New York sophomore. Gets them both. He's at nine points on the night, and the lead is back to 19. To Alec, uh, to uh, Dickey, to Anderson off the glass and gets it. His first bucket. We could really afford for uh, Kenny Anderson to get hot. 57 to 40. At the 15 minute mark, this is Boko. Looking for a hole, brings it back outside, 13 to shoot. Left corner, and a travel. Glenn takes steps. The Thoroughbreds trying to keep their Hope home winning streak alive, and they make the pick. This is Glenn outside to Boko, and String music, and the lead is an even 20. Piedmont started off the season, and there's a turnover outside the reach of Kenny Anderson. Piedmont started off the year pretty rough and lost most of their first games back in the first semester and the early season and have uh, come alive. They're coming off a win against Regent University over the weekend. So they have a little bit of momentum now. Kenneth Williams checking into the ball game. I believe this is his first appearance of the night. Weston at the controls right now working against Darian Williams, 60 to 40. Boko against JB. Outside. This was a seven point ball game up in Winston Salem. Boko can't make it. Rebound to Williams. Forward to Jamison. Picks up his dribble outside to JB. JB looking for help, finds it in Dickey. Dickey driving in. He's going to put it up off the glass. Too hard. Rebound Piedmont. And here comes Cook in the corner. Shot is up and good by Weston. 63 to 40, and it's all Piedmont now. Williams said he's going to take it to the hole. Stops the bleeding momentarily. 63-42. Boko outside, shot not there, tapped up once, and a charge. And that'll go against Daniels, his first. Thirteen seventeen to play in this one, and it has pretty much been the Bruins with explosive quickness taking advantage of the turnovers they've forced, and out of bounds, Williams driving the baseline, but his foot crosses the border. This is Weston, and a whistle. Williams will sit down. And Victor Nong checks back into the lineup for the Thoroughbreds. Twelve fifty to play. Boko dishing inside. Shots not there. Tapped into the hands of Nong, and he loses it. And we're going to have to reset the uh, shot clock. It continued down. Should have reset to 20, I believe, and uh, they'll reset it to 17. With 12.40 to play, 63-42. Shot too long, 
Jamison cleans the glass for the thoroughbreds, gets it forward to Nong. That's Nong's range, but rather get it to Dickey. Dickey with the turnaround, good. Four points for Dickey tonight, 12-18 to play in this one, and the lead is now 19 at 63-44. Boko to Weston, and Weston fouled on the play. He's going to have two shots coming up, or is it three? Odom with the call. Weston with six points on the night. Lead back to an even 20. Alicott hauls it in. JB trying to feed it inside, and Weston with the steal forward. The shot is up off the glass, and good for Williams, his first bucket. 66-44. Nong outside, three on the way, got it, string music. Could use a few more of those. Is that his, his first bucket tonight? 66-47 now. Coming up on 11 and a half to play in this one. Stops, pop, shoots. This is Boko, not there. Jameson with another carom. And there's going to be a reach-in foul on number 23, Joshua Daniels, his second and I have that as the team's second here in the half. Christian Baker checks into the lineup for Devon Alicott. They're going to give him a second to get off the floor. And also checking into the ball game, Avery Wilkes. Wilkes, a six-foot freshman out of Winston-Salem, guard for Piedmont. 66-47. JB driving in and a whistle. Weston trying to convince Mike Shepard that it's going to it was a walk and instead I believe it's going to be an Olafemi Boko reach in foul. His second team's third according to my highly unofficial statistics. Piedmont still in control 66-47 with 11.23 to play and 25 to shoot for blue lights. JB working up and off the glass, not there. Two shots coming up, and I think it's going to be Williams. It's going to be called with the body foul. And indeed it is. It'll be his first, team's fourth, and two shots coming up. For the freshman out of Roxboro, uh, excuse me, Lawrenceville, Georgia. His first point of the night. And there's a lane violation, and that nullifies the point. It'll stay at 18, 66, 48 with... 11-19 to play. Lots of time left for Blue Lights, but unless they can get some stops, it'll be all for naught. And there's going to be a body foul against CJ. It's going to pick up his first. Working it around. The clock is Piedmont's friend. 19 to shoot. Boko stops, pops, three-pointer on the way. Got it. Lead back to 21, largest of the night. And loses the handle and dribbles right out of bounds. And it's been that kind of an evening for Blue Lights. Pretty dejected bench as the Thoroughbreds really came into this game feeling like uh, they could 
steal this one from the Bruins after the way they played such a tight game against them in Winston-Salem less than a month ago. And the ball goes out of bounds. They'll say Piedmont touched it last as both Vic and JB allow it to bounce across the line. Chris Baker back into the lineup now for the lights. Rolling it in, get the shooter's touch, CJ for two. He's got seven points all here in the second half. Ten minutes to go in this one. We're in the final quarter. And I was going to say it was a, a walk, but instead looks like it's going to be a foul against JB. That'll be his second and the team's third. Off the inbounds pass, not there. And another rebound for Jamison, who is making hay in the rebound department to JB. Boko hounding JB, 14 to shoot. JB trying to get rid of him, does so long enough. Baker with the follow, can't get it to drop. Loose ball, fought for, Jamison has it. And a timeout. Blue lights, they'll keep possession with 9.28. And let's see if this is going to be a uh, 60 or a 30. That'll make our determination what we'll do here. Uh, looks like a 30 will keep it right here with 928 to play. And uh, a, a pretty frustrating night here at home for the Thoroughbreds. The uh, shot clock, it looks like um, getting the indication that both teams will be in the free throw for the uh, rest of the evening. Now the shot clock should have been reset. Reset the shot clock. And the, re and the uh, shot clock gets reset. After the uh, Christian Baker miss and uh, a, a foul apparently, a technical foul. As Williams goes to the line, and I'm not sure why uh, that uh, technical was called. But the Blue Lights Thoroughbreds will take it. As Williams hits them both, and the lead is at 17. Take every point you can get with the clock stopped. Sixty-nine fifty-two, and CJ will inbound in front of the Blue Lights bench. Williams at the controls and a reach in. Wilkes picking up his first. And now we're told that we're in the bonus. And so Jameson should have a shot coming up with 925. And this is another uh, golden opportunity for the Thoroughbreds to climb back into this with the clock stopped and uh, down by 17. And hits them both. 69-54, the lead to 15 now. Closest it's been in a while as Jameson gets a hand on it but can't get the takeaway. He's got to be careful. Driving inside and drops it up and through. And a nice piece of work by Williams. 71-54. Jameson stops, pops, shoots. That'll work. Four, four, 
71-56. And I think they're going to call foul with two shots. Thought it might have been even goaltending. Hashim Weston, sophomore guard from Winston-Salem, averages 3.8 points a game. He is at 6 here in Apex tonight. Boko back into the lineup for Piedmont. Curtis Coleman checks back in as well, as well as Benami Spence. 71-56, and Weston with one more. And there it is. 72-56. Back to 16. Dickey working inside, finds Jamison. Jamison open for three. He's got 14 all in the second half. And it's at 13. That's the closest it's been since the first half with 8.20 to play. 16 to shoot. Out front, this is Oliver. Over to Coleman. Out front, they're more than happy to burn a little clock, losing the handle, and Baker picks it up. Two on two, gives it up to Dickey and slams it home. That may be just what the doctor ordered as it cuts the lead now to 11, 72 to 61. Maybe a little spark here for the lights. Out front, there's an opening. Spinning around and inside. The ball knocked away by Dickey. He's going to be called for the foul, and he owns it. Only his first, however. He's going to get a, a, a hand from uh, Coach Mario Farr for the effort as uh, Devon Ellicott gets set to check back in. Cook rattles this one in. His first point of the second half. He's got three. Here comes Ellicott. And Dickey will sit down. 73-61, 7.37 remaining here in the ball game. And the lights have shown some signs of life here in the last few minutes. This one's short. Baker with the big rebound. Over to Jamison. Back to Baker. Baker stops, pops, shoots off the glass. Not there. Tapped outside. Williams has it. He's going to drive. Back across. It goes to Jamison for three. It's short. Rebound Piedmont. Quickly. Forward. And they make good on it. Coleman now with 12. Waiting for it. It's good and a foul on the play. Foul on Cook, his third. And Williams, who is money at the line, trying to get three the old-fashioned way and does so. He's got 17 points thus far with seven minutes to go. The lead back to 11. It's been as high as 21. Josh Howard telling his... Guys to move. Losing the ball. Piedmont keeps possession in the corner. Not there. Rebound. Baker has it. And last touched by. That's That should be. I, I thought Piedmont touched that one. They're saying no. And the thoroughbreds are not arguing it. So I won't either. Clock running with 6.35 to go, 75-64. The big guy, Jeffrey Nolan, 
who did plenty of damage underneath, is on the bench, but more Kendall Oliver can do a thing or two as well. Lost out of bounds. Blue Lights will retain possession. Browder checking into the ball game. And Weston back in for Piedmont as well. And timeout on the floor, 78-64. It's a 30. We'll keep it here. And uh, the Murderer's Row, part of the schedule, now on for the Thoroughbreds, month of December. Really tough for Blue Lights. Just got off, the, we have documented that road trip to Hialeah, Florida, two losses against third-ranked Florida National. Of course, this game tonight against a very athletic Piedmont International squad. Ball comes inbound to Alicott to Williams. Trip to Buffalo. Two tough games coming up this weekend. And Alicott with a good look. Can't get it to go. Loose ball. Nong is there. Alicott working inside. Finds Browder and a travel by Alicott before he can get rid of the ball. After the Buffalo trip, turn right around and head to Lake Zurich, Illinois, outside of Chicago for the Small College National Invitational Tournament starting next Thursday where they will meet Old Foe, Appalachian Bible College. They've already knocked off the Warriors twice this season. Can they do it a third time to advance to the finals? We'll find out on Thursday. Quickly down the floor to Browder. Browder dishing outside to Williams. Williams thinking three, finds Browder outside. The shot not there and touched last. Who has it? It'll be Blue Lights basketball. To Jamison, 78-64. It's a 14-point advantage. They find Alicott. Alicott working inside. He's got a gimme. Can't make it work. Has the ball stripped away inside by Coleman. Here come the Bruins with 5-11 to play and a 14-point lead. It's been as little as 11, as many as 21. Outside, a push-off, no call. Outside again, this is Coleman, and he drains it for three. 16 points now for Coleman, averaging 20 a clip. Williams drives off the glass and good. He's having a terrific game. 19 for the sophomore, 81-66. Time running out for Blue Lights. They've got to get some stops and convert. Down by 15. Outside Coleman against Nong. This is Oliver. Williams in control. Brings it across. Drives the lane. And he's fouled on the play. He'll go to the line for two more. I have that as only Curtis Coleman's first foul of the evening. But the uh, free throws are in effect. Two shots for Williams. He's got 20 now. This could very well, but I'll have to go back and uh, double check. This could be his... Uh, career and season high. Oh, can't get that one to go, and Browder gets a hand on it twice, and they're going to say that was enough to give it to Piedmont. 4.02 to go. Piedmont with the lead in the basketball, 14 the margin. Coleman at the controls against Browder, man-to-man -man defense. That's what we've had all night by both of these squads. That's Cook against Alicott. 
An illegal pick set will turn it over to the lights. Lights aren't out yet, folks. Kenny Anderson about to set foot back onto the court at the next dead ball. 3.37 to go, 26 to shoot. This is Williams. To Alicott. To Nong has it loose for a second. Cross court. Jamison has an opening. And an opportunity for two from the line. He's fouled by Cook. That's his fourth, according to my stats. And let's see. No, it's five. Cook is done for the night. And that'll be the second Bruin heading to the bench for the evening. Spence checks back into the lineup for Josh Howard's crew. 322 to go in this one. And Jamison, who's pretty good from the line himself, that's his third from the line there this evening. He's got 15 all in the second half. It's been the Jamison and Williams show. They have kept blue lights in this one. Boy, he does it the hard way, but he gets it. Anderson checks in. Jamison sits down. Browder, Williams, Alicott, Nong. Anderson all on the floor for blue lights. Here we go with 317 to play in this one. The lead is at 12. Josh Howard does not look worried. Mario Farr calling it out. There's a whistle on the loose ball. Knocked away. Ball was kicked. Resets the clock to 20. The shot clock, that is, 3.06. Looking, looking, looking. Gets it in wide open underneath. An easy two for Spence underneath as the thoroughbreds were caught looking. Williams puts it in on the drive. He's got 21, 83-71. Lead back to an even dozen. 243, and Blue Lights keeps hanging around, but you get shots like that from Tamir Glenn, and boy, that's just like an arrow through your heart. 86-71, two and a half to go in this one. Here comes Browder. Ball knocked away, gets it back, gets it into the hands of Alicott just in time. Outside, Anderson not there. Kenny's cold tonight. 15-point advantage, 2-10 to play. Looking underneath, caught once again. Oh, can't convert that time. Too wide open was Spence. Here comes Williams. He'll take it if he's got it. Hole closes up. Anderson wants it. He'll take it inside, and he's fouled on the play. Two shots coming up for the sharpshooter. He's had his struggles tonight. He hasn't had many opportunities, to be honest with you. Williams sits down. Dickey checks back into the ball game. Max Memminger back in. Boy, he had a uh, he had a quiet seven points. Excuse me. No, no, I was looking at the wrong line. He did pick up a foul in the first half. Avery Wilkes checks in for Curtis Coleman. Kenny gets that one. Just under two minutes to play, 86-72. And we're going to have a traffic, uh, uh, tripping call, I think that's what they call that, Alicott. And boy, with, as busy as he has been, I only have that as his second foul. Glenn shooting. That's the first point Tamir Glenn has made that didn't count for three points tonight. The first shot he's made, he gets that one. 88-72, 145 to go. 
time running out for the Thoroughbreds. Daquan Holloway about to check in. Off the drive, up and good for Browder. That's his first bucket of the second half. He's got 10 on the night. Avery Wilkes. It's the name of two counties in western North Carolina. Where is he from? Winston-Salem. I wonder if that was on purpose. <laughs> These things just pop in my mind, Rod. What can I do? <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> Foul on the floor against the Thoroughbreds. Going to put Glenn on the line. Daquan Holloway checks in for Jawan Browder with 1.12 to go. Not looking good for the Mudville 9. Where's Casey when we need him? Ninety to seventy-four. Back to a sixteen-point advantage as the clock is running down. Nong squares up and lets it fly. Boy, where's that been all night? That's his second one from long range. Cuts it to thirteen. Under a minute to play now. Got to get some stops. Make some quick buckets. Holloway gets picked inside the shot, not there, but that's going to be a foul. I think it's going to be uh, Devon Alicott picking it up. And, again, with as busy as he has been, as active as he's been, he's only got three called fouls tonight, and that's, uh, that's pretty remarkable. Short for Hashim Weston. Just one of many hometown boys on this squad for Josh Howard. Five players from Winston-Salem on the squad. Dishing it left side. Dickey squaring up. It's not going to drop. Follow is up and good for Nong. He can score from two as well. That's an 11-point deficit with 30 seconds to play, and there's the reach-in to stop the clock by Nong, his first foul. Two shots now as we're in the double bonus with 29 and a half seconds to go in this one and an 11-point lead for Piedmont International. Up and good. He's got eight on the Knights, quietly doing his work. And makes it again. 92-79, under 30 to play. Holloway pushing it up, hands it off to Anderson, lets it fly, in and out. And Holloway stops the clock. Eighteen point four seconds to go in this one, and as best I can tell, just about everybody that dressed has played. I think for maybe a couple of players for Piedmont did not make it onto the floor tonight. Glenn with his fifth free throw on the evening to go with. Nine points from beyond the arc. This one won't drop. 16 seconds and counting. Dickey stops, pops, shoots. Not there. High off the iron. Cleared by Peabot. No. Loose ball. Now the Bruins have it. Almost loses it out of bounds. And uh, that is going to do it here in Apex this evening. And our final Piedmont International 93 Blue Lights College 79. We will uh, step away. These two teams will step to the middle of the floor in just a moment for a word of prayer before uh, we break away. We're going to step away for about 60 seconds or so. When we come back, we'll have our uh, unofficial scoring totals for the night and uh, wrap things up. So we'll be right back. 
You can hurt yourself anywhere, on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports app. Your home for your sports network. Welcome back to Apex, everybody. A, a disappointing night for Blue Lights College. Uh, their third loss in a row. That is going to drop them to 9 and 12 on the season with another grueling road test coming up this weekend in Buffalo, New York. Doing the final math here to uh, check our uh, scoring. And uh, first of all, for uh, Piedmont International, uh, just about everybody uh, that played, I think, got into the scoring action tonight, uh, with the exception of maybe one. Two points for Cameron Alexander. Three points for Jacob Cook. Four points for Kenneth Williams. Eight points for Olafemi Boko, who was everywhere on the floor. Nine each for Hashim Weston and for Kendall Oliver. Nine as well for Joshua Daniels. Ten points for Benami Spence. Seven points for Jeffrey Nolan. And the Bruins were led by Curtis Coleman with 15. Tamir Glenn with 14. For the Thoroughbreds this evening, Two points. Uh, one point will start with uh, J.B. Azell Upchurch coming in the second half. Two points for Yak Yak. Three points for Kenny Anderson. Six-point performance for Chris Dickey. Coming off the bench for 10 was Jawan Browder. Ten points for Chance Jamison all in the second half. 13 points for Devon Alicott, who had the first seven points of the ball game for Blue Lights. Eight points for uh, Victor Nong, all coming in the second half. And 22 points to lead all scorers, Darian Williams. And uh, I'll have to check that, but that may be a uh, career high for the sophomore from Raleigh. So as mentioned, Blue Lights drops to 9 and 12 on the season and 0 and 2 in this series with Piedmont International and uh, Coach Josh Howard saying before the game he uh, wants to play us next year as well. So we are looking forward to that. And who knows if uh, the stars align, who knows, maybe uh, we'll be in the same conference next year. We'll, uh, we'll work on that. We'll see. We're working on forming a conference and... Uh, We've got several schools that are indicating that they are interested, including Piedmont International and uh, others to be named uh, later and a second-round draft pick. That's going to do it for us here this evening. Uh, our thanks, as always, a big tip of the hat to Rod Warren for his work tonight on camera as well as engineering the broadcast and uh, working miracles to just get us on the air 
Thank you, sir. Our network manager in Fayetteville, Arkansas. That's right. He's all the way out there, Blair Cartwright. Thank you so much for what you do for us as well. Our thanks to uh, Josh Howard and his staff and, of course, to Mario Farr and uh, the Thoroughbreds coaching staff for everything that they do for us. Once again, the final here in Apex tonight, Piedmont International 93, Blue Lights College 79. Our next and final home game of the season coming up, uh, oh, in about three weeks. Two, two, two weeks from now? Two? I think it's two. Johnson and Wales comes to town February the 18th, Tuesday night the 18th. Uh, that is two weeks from tonight. Hope you'll be here for sophomore night. We will recognize uh, the two sophomores uh, on the team and uh, hopefully send them out with a win over the top-ranked Wildcats. Once again, thanks for joining us, everybody. We will see you then. In the meantime, God bless everybody. and. We'll see you in two weeks.